Who are you? Joanna Newsom. Joanna Newsom, welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to begin with a quote. Okay. Here it is. Quote, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Man. <laughs> That's actually a lyric, and you got it from a Sparks song. I did? Yeah. The Sparks have a song. Sparks, my favorite band, Sparks. Okay. And I have a gift for you, a Sparks LP, to prepare you, as they have a song about Carnegie Hall. And that's where you're going to be shortly, right? Yes. So you know the lyrics for the song then, eh? Now I do, and I, I will brush up. Joanna, there's a new book out called American Harpist. Really? And you are? A harpist. And you are in it. I am. You are in it. Really? With another fellow who I thought I would ask you about. This gentleman right here, Harpo... Marx. <laughs> Harpo Marx. What can you tell the people about Harpo Marx? Are you into the Harpo Marx? Um, I don't really, as a musician, know much about Harpo Marx. <laughs> I haven't, like, I don't own a Harpo Marx record. Well, if you turn it over, Joanna, check this out. This is what I found interesting. Look what it says right there about Harpo. Today, could you read that off there? Today, he has graduated from a $40 antique harp to a $12,000 instrument. And that's what I was wondering. You know quite a bit about that, don't you? You never had the pleasure of having a $40 harp, did you? No, but I did have a $1,000 harp, which is pretty darn cheap for harps. That's still the one that I play. So the one that Harpo's playing, does this bring back any memories? Have you seen any of these? Have you drooled over any of these harps that look like this? Can you tell? Are you a harp aficionado? Do you know what type of harp that is? Not based on what I can see, because you can't see it. And I guess it would be worth more than 10000 right now, especially if Harpo touched it. Yeah, if Harpo touched it. Everything Harpo touches turns to gold, as you know. And Joanna, I have some more harp records. Check out this one and what it's called. <laughs> have harp, can't travel. Can't travel. Now, has that been a problem for you at all? Yeah, I mean, it certainly has. I used to drive around just with a girlfriend and a little, like, Subaru, and we had some difficulty getting the harp different places occasionally. Now, this particular harp, do you know anything about this harp? I'm just fascinated. Does this harp make you drool at all? This is a Lion and Healy, and I don't know what style. Would that work for Joanna? Yes, I exclusively play Lion and Healy harps. And more information on the back is parlayed. And check this out if you want to read this. This is what I found really fascinating. The sparkle. Mm -hmm. And grandeur, that is the harp, is displayed without any overdubbing or speeded up gimmicks, which many other harp albums have employed. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Huh. Gimmicks in harp albums? Are there gimmicks in harp albums? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's actually hard to edit harp music because there's all these overtones ringing constantly. So um, we ha there aren't a whole lot of gimmicks I know of. Do you use any effects, though? Have you ever used any effects like auto-tune, maybe, or pedals? We used auto-tune on the last album on a flute note, a single flute note. Did it work? Were you happy with the results? And where can people hear that? At what point? Oh, I'll never tell. Uh, yeah, I was delighted with the results. Now, this gentleman right here, Joanne, he's trying to carry it on the bus, but I love your carrying case that you have. You have a neat carrying case, don't you, for your harp? It's pretty neat, yeah. Was that hard to get? How custom is that? Not custom at all. They, they all come with those cases. <laughs> Joanna, you have a song called Only... Skin. Only Skin, and it made me think you're playing the harp for two hours. How is your skin? Blood ever? Blood sometimes, blood sometimes. Uh, if I'm good and I rehearse as I should, leading up to a tour enough times, enough hours per day, then generally no blood, but there have been incidents. How gross can it get though when you're playing a harp? Because it could look really bad. Like a guitar player is not as big, but a harp. Has it ever scared the audience? Has blood ever dripped down and scared the audience? And what have you done? Um, blood has never dripped down and scared the audience that I know of, but there, I. There was a time that I kept reapplying super glue over like an open hand wound. That was pretty gross, I think, because it was seeping under the glue in this really creepy way. Um, and there was a years ago, I saw a photo of me playing right at the moment that like a blood blister 
exploded. <laughs> and there was kind of a dramatic um, plume in the photo, but I haven't seen it in a long time. I looked for it recently because I wanted to show someone and I couldn't find it. What do we have here? I found out about you through Arthur. Arthur. I love Arthur Mag. What, yeah, what can you tell the people about Arthur? Uh, good magazine, very good magazine. Rest in peace, unfortunately, online only now. Oh, I heard. Tragic. But they really paved the way by getting the word out in that folk movement. That folk movement. I, be, I, love, I bet you love having it referred to that way. That folk oh, movement. Yeah. yeah, or even just movement, period. <laughs> but that was Jay Babcock. It and was Jay Babcock, yes. And cock, kind of like Roy Harper cock. Almost exactly like Roy Harper cock. Yeah, so like total Arthur, Roy Harper, you're totally connected. These are the things that make Joanna Newsome. I think you pretty much nailed it. Joanna, what was the PA patrol? Holy cow. Uh, that was a dance group that I was in in third grade, second and third grade with some friends uh, where we choreographed dance numbers to Paula Abdul songs. And was that when you first got into, quote, hip-hop? Because now you're with The Roots. Is that your first exposure to hip-hop? Wait, okay. Is, are, are The Roots my first exposure to hip-hop? Was the PA Patrol? Oh. Um, no, MC Hammer was my first. Or actually, either MC Hammer or Criss Cross. I'm not sure which was the first rec record CD I had. Tape. <laughs> you had, a few months ago, Obama on drums. I did? Yes, Fred Armisen. Oh, yeah, I did. Well, we had him, like, playing a cowbell. So what does that look like when you turn around and you see Obama on cowbell? It's the most beautiful sight you can imagine. Joanna, I interviewed MGMT. Oh, you did? And I forgot to ask them about you being in their video. I was in the video. You were in the video. I did ask them about the video. I said, what was the name of the kid in the video? And they couldn't remember the name of the kid. They didn't know. What was the name of the kid? Zachary. How dare they not know, eh? I don't know. It's crazy. They said that he was crying, but he was crying because he was hungry. He wasn't scared of the monsters. What do you remember? I think he was pretty scared of the monsters. <laughs> oh, really? Is that what the band would say? Uh, well, they weren't actually there. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, maybe he was hungry. He, he might have been hungry. I think he was a little scared of the monsters, too. <laughs> Joanna, I was looking through all your CDs and your lyrics. I couldn't find one swear word. Really? Yeah. Are there any swear words missed up in anywhere? Well, there's a few goddams, I think, along the way. Does that count? But there's no classic swear words, like the seven words you can't say on the radio type swear words. No, no, none, none yet. Have you ever been tempted to rhyme any of those in there? Not as yet. I might. I have a, I sort of feel like um, copious use of swear words. I feel like sometimes it's shorthand where like the person writing the song wants to quickly transfer a feeling without actually conveying the feeling. So they just kind of stick a word in there. I kind of would prefer to convey it a different way. But you never know. I may write a, a filthy, filthy song. <laughs> it's possible. Do people yell that you write a filthy song? Every day of my life, I'm just walking down the street, everywhere. And you are Joanna? Newsome. And lastly, you're Joanna. Here we are in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Before we leave Canada, Owen Pallet, Final Fantasy. Great. He's covering you. What do you think about that? It's pretty awesome. He's a Canadian? A Canadian. A Canadian, yeah. And moreover, an excellent songwriter, great performer, yeah. And maybe he should cover the please too, oh Canada. I think that he should. And then that would be a real whammy, wouldn't it? It would be a true whammy, yeah. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all, Joanna? I don't know. I think we've said it all. Well, thanks very much. Keep on rocking in the free world and do 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 <laughs>